welcome to another Keel Hall Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Logan, and we've got a lot of Sea of Thieves news to cover today, so tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. Ahoy there, pirates. I hope you had yourselves a good week and a good weekend. I know I did. This week, we got a ton of news all about the Hunter's Call, harpoons, cooking, fishing, all that and more on this week's episode of Keel Hall Podcast. First up on today's docket, we're going to be talking about the Hunter's Call and how it fits into the anniversary update. So this week's video entailed Joe, John, and Shelly to stream for about an hour and intersect uh, different videos that they later put on YouTube so that they can kind of talk about some of the different things that revolve around the Hunter's Call and what it means for us coming on the 30th. So... Some of the cool stuff that we're getting is the next reputation, which is the Hunter's Call. It is led by Merrick from The Hungering Deep. And to be honest, I kind of want to call this uh, reputation the Super Merchant Brothers 2. And my mindset of that is these guys are out on sea posts. They're better than cargo because you're going to be hunting for stuff and you're going to be taking the food and whatnot to them. But essentially, they are just kind of a drop-off point. They don't really give you any kind of voyages so it's it's interesting I, I like how this is turning into more of a you know we're working for other people but we're not tied to like completing a voyage for something so far of what we know about the story Merrick his wife ended up swimming off with a fish or excuse me not a fish with a merman as a result of Merrick being so obsessed with getting the hungering one now that she's back, she's decided to give Merrick a second chance at marriage and focus more on the family. And as such, created a family company, a company of hunters. Now, they're all going to be out on sea posts. And as far as I can understand it, there are eight of them. So Merrick and Derek, who if you remember Derek, that was actually kind of a story that came from the Hungering Deep about a pirate who looked very similar to Merrick, took a photo and claimed himself as the long-lost son. So, along with Merrick and Derek, there's Sarek, Anarik, Afric, Zaharik, Emmerich, and Hendrik. Uh, so, you're kind of noticing a trend here. So, all eight of them are out on the eight different sea posts in the Sea of Thieves. Uh, the original three Sea of Thieves, I believe. I don't know if they're out in the Devil's... Actually, they're probably out on the Devil's Roar. I shouldn't count that out because I know there's at least two, two that are out there, which would put six on the three seas, which would mean that there's at least two sea posts per sea. Yeah, that sounds about right. I, I'm just kind of doing that math in my head as I'm thinking about where they are in the world. So I'm pretty sure there's two per sea and... Uh, not Percy the name, but just per S E A Percy. So the family is out there. What's their goal? Well, the point of them is so that with the hunter's call, they will give you reputation, cosmetics, all kinds of gold, all that good stuff for bringing them uh, cooked food or uncooked food. Basically, if you bring them any kind of fish or meat, uh, meals are worth more, but you have to cook those to be able to get higher credit for them. And they will then in turn give you uh, supplies, or not supplies, but cosmetics in, in exchange. And there's tons of cosmetics uh, that I've heard are coming that are tied to the reputation, that are tied to the the actual uh, the killer whale. So... If you haven't, uh, maybe you're new to the Sea of Thieves and you don't know what the killer whale is. Uh, back in May, when the Hungering Deep was kind of starting, getting ready to come out, out on one of the uncharted isles, there is a crow's nest that is, is crested the water and is up in one of the uncharted isles. And out there, if you go out to that shipwreck, for a long time, it didn't actually have a name. And then shortly before the Hungering Deep came out, it gained a name. It was called the Killer Whale, which is a, a play on Orca, which was the name of the vessel that uh, was used in Jaws. So Hungering Deep, Giant Megalodon, Killer Whale, Galleon, Jaws, Shark, sh Vessel, Orca. There, there's your, there's your Easter eggs. Uh, if you know all this, this is, I'm just boring you at this point, but... 
the the point of it was that uh, with the killer whale, it had liveries that no one ever saw. It was just a named ship. And we found out that that's actually going to be changing. So some of the custom cosmetics are actually coming with the Hunter's Call. Uh, and, and actually, we don't know if this is something that's going to be uh, like a commendation reward or if it's going to be something that's tied to uh, Duke or if it's something that's going to be tied to the reputation. I would imagine that this is like a legendary commendation kind of thing because that feels like the kind of level that we're talking about here. But this is going to be the first time that we're going to get a kind of replica version of of the killer whale in the game so uh it, it sounds awesome i i <laughs> i think we've seen some stuff on it from the some of the videos i can't remember i don't know i i remember seeing some tweets from uh from someone but i can't remember where they got the source so i'm not going to talk about it but it, <laughs> it would be kind of funny it'd be kind of funny if the liveries had like just a like an orca like a killer whales painting and then up towards the front where they have the eye they just have a big googly eye is that bad is that too too outside the realm of sea of thieves to have googly eyes on ships maybe it is i don't know i i kind of think maybe it'd be funny to see a ship kind of cresting waves and stuff and there's just googly eye flopping around it'd be hilarious to me I, maybe i'm dumb um, I'm not dumb. That's hilarious. And you'd like it too. Uh, I would love to see some people Photoshop some googly eyes onto, uh, onto ships now, just like angry ones and stuff. It'd be good. You're out there. Get, get on it, get on it. So some of the interesting things about the hunter's call, again, all of the representatives for these, uh, for this, this reputation, this trade company are not actually on the outposts. You, you won't find any of, uh, Merrick's family out, out on the outpost. So if you want to see them, you'll have to swim out to the sea posts or I guess sail. You, I guess you could sail, go ahead and sail. And, uh, you'll, you'll find them out there. They're just going to be cooking, hanging out, and you can interact with them the way that you would any other, uh, uh, vendor. Basically you just, if you have something to turn in, you just turn it into them kind of thing so uh with there being no voyages i guess it doesn't really matter where you take stuff um but it, like like they said that uh there's there basically you can turn in anything that you can cook to them so any kind of animals whether it be pigs or chickens snakes uh apparently even sharks yield meat and they have mentioned that things like the megalodon and also the kraken also drop meat uh and depending on how often you run into those and how much money they give for them it sounds good that you'll be able to you'll you'll kind of get even more from these things you know eventually they just started dropping random loot and that was great because you could kind of it, it was worth actually taking them out and now that we have a new trade company it makes sense that they would want to drop things like that so that you can actually get uh, something to turn in for them as well the the interesting question that I have and one question that was asked on the weekly stream that I thought was cool that they wanted to know if there were commendations or not commendations, excuse me, uh, letters of recommendation for the hungering deep and they didn't or not the hungering deep the hunters call. Oh, man, Merrick is too tied to that that expansion for me to break my mind of that. So they they said they weren't sure so we're gonna see if that's actually the case or not and because of that it makes me it took them until it took them until shrouded spoils which was uh november from launch almost a full year to get really good items in skeleton forts for you to be able to turn in so that you could advance the the merchant alliance rep a lot easier so you wouldn't have to be out there catching pigs you know transporting cargo stuff like that i i kind of hope that they went ahead and put in some crates of uh of meat you know some some high value meat of some sort to be able to turn in to the uh to the different um sea post vendors the different family members of merrick because it's it's one of those things like uh if if they haven't if they haven't given you any kind of way to boost up your turn in for this it seems interesting to me that um that they're going to be giving us a hard grind for a reputation that is just a normal trading company because as it is uh getting from one to fifty 
with the original three trading companies has been made a lot easier. And I think I think they're going to have the uh, the two new trading companies be a lot harder to actually grind. And, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of thinking about this now. I don't think they'll put anything in the skeleton fort for the hunter's call. It wouldn't make sense because... Uh, the the cash there the vault that's actually a tribute for uh, uh flameheart and flameheart doesn't really have a whole lot of need for meat of any kind he's undead he doesn't eat he doesn't have that desire so i guess we don't get anything out of forts for the hunter's call uh with that kind of rationale i guess that kind of answers that but uh anyway it's we'll have to see you never know. It's it's always hard to tell whether or not. I mean, there's spices. <laughs> there's crates of spices in the vault. So that logic kind of kills itself as well, too. Um, yeah, it'll be cool. I'm looking forward to having a, a couple new reputations to grind. That's definitely, it's going to be something that I'm going to be doing a lot of, especially once the game is actually launched. And just just to have something to see, like, numbers go up again. Again, going back... I still wish that there was a way that I could prestige my uh, levels and regrind those original three to to give me something to do, some some worth or value for turn-ins other than just, meh, it's gold. Have I got enough? Yeah. Do I really need to turn this in? No. Am I going to be lazy and log out with a, with a uh, ship full of treasure? Probably. Probably. So... Uh, that's how it goes sometimes, I guess. Uh, we'll we'll find out. There's there's lots of things that they could do, and the team's very open to suggestions. So you never know. Don't rule that one out. Okay, so the next two topics I'm going to be talking about are two topics that, to be perfectly honest, I was not very excited about. I looked at these uh, two things, and I'll be talking about them as different topics. So this second item on today's docket revolves around fishing. And while I know that this has been a, a really special thing for a lot of people, a lot of people have wanted fishing for a long time, I didn't see the goal of it. I didn't see the understanding behind it. And to be perfectly frank, it seemed like kind of a slowing experience in the game. I, I get just as much enjoyment out of sitting on an island and staring out onto the sea from a high vantage point as I do if I were down on the beach uh, fishing. In fact, I think my experience might be a little more uh, serene. But, but, that was all before this weekly update. <clears throat> I actually sat down and rewatched all of the videos that they put out this last week multiple times multi to the point where I actually was starting to see like scenes from different films in the videos as they were doing stuff I was like god that reminds me of Deliverance that reminds me of Batman like there are some it was it was kind of strange I I probably spent maybe a little too too much time watching those videos but I digress Fishing actually looks really cool. Um, they, the, the thing, okay, so here's the thing that actually kind of compelled me about it. And a lot of it was in the specific video with Chris Marlowe and Shelly Preston. Uh, now obviously, I'm partial to those two for telling me things about the game. And it made, it was really interesting to hear them talk about just how much went into the actual construction of the fishing experience like and and what i mean is is they talk about specifics as far as like building on layer upon layer about camera movement about shakes about tension in the line and how the game doesn't actually have any kind of heads up display when you're fishing there's no there's no indication outside of of what you would normally see when actually fishing to let you know like you know is the fish hooked is it swimming where's it swimming what should i do like it, it's all intuitive on to uh what happens based on your experience and if if you don't pay attention to it then it sounds like you're gonna have a hard time fishing um but after watching a lot of the videos i started to really kind of hone in 
on this looking and feeling like a first person version of the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time fishing in it. Uh, I spent hours when I was a kid in the 90s fishing in Zelda for some of the the really hard to catch big fish because I wanted all the heart pieces and some of them you really had to you had to use specific bait you had to fish in certain areas and you had to be really lucky to catch it and this was one of those things that I was looking at this and I'm like man they put they put a lot of effort into this, and I was really surprised at just how much depth went into. So besides just the the normal fishing rod that you get, they're going to have at least 20 different cosmetics just for the fishing rods. And it looks like they're even like including... like. In the video, they showed the the shop that has all, or I don't know, maybe it wasn't the shop. Maybe they just had all the fishing rods, but they showed a screenshot of all of the fishing rods cosmetics. And I went through, I counted them all, and I kind of took a look at like some of them to see like what kind of cosmetics they are. It looks like all of the the normal cosmetics that you have right now are currently represented by that, as well as a couple others that I just don't recognize from anything. Um, so I'm imagining that's probably new stuff that we're getting. But things like the Bone Crusher set, the Ocean Crawler set, the Kraken set, those are actually in like a fishing rod form now. So we're going to be getting full cosmetic spread for the fishing rod. You can customize it any way that you want, depending on what they have. And this will probably be included in future updates with new cosmetics uh, as well. Um, I'm really happy about that because I didn't think they wouldn't do that, but with the cap stands, for example, where we only got a small select number of cap stands, cannons, and wheel customizations, I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get the full range, that we didn't get all of the different cosmetics. We got a small set of them, and then some of the, uh, what was it, the, the Pirate Legend stuff, and that was it. You know, we, we really didn't get like all of the different sets that you could possibly use. And as a result, I'm hoping that's something that comes with this update as well. I was actually really surprised to hear this, but apparently there are 10 different breeds of fish with up to five different colors per breed. And that one of these is for sure only available at night. And that one is for sure only like super rare and i'm i'm kind of happy about that you know it's it's hopefully not going to be one of those things where you're having to try and find out if the shrouded ghost is a, a myth or not uh but it, it's kind of nice that we're getting some variants with these and that you're going to be able to see multiple types of fish out there some of the things they joked about were ones that were only found in the ponds on islands called pondies which it's, it's still one of the best scenes from the weekly update with Joe and John kind of m like mocking Pondies. They're like, what are you doing out here, Pondy? Go back to your pond. <laughs> it's just, God, I don't know what it is about that scene that just cracks me up every time I see it. But it's uh, some of these, obviously, uh, just kind of like where we had some of the different other uh, Bilge Rat Adventures where you, you're you going to want to refer to the commendations for where to find some of these, like how to, how to you know, catch them. And a lot of this ties into a baiting system that they actually created with this as well, too. So it's not just toss your reel in and get what you can and hope that you hope for the best. It's no, there's there's actually going to be some sort of strategy involved with this. You're going to have to go out and you're actually going to have to go to different areas in different circumstances, whether it be at night, in a storm, in the middle of a volcano, and you're going to have to actually find these different fish, and you're going to have to bait them out with different types of bait. And they said that there were grubs, there were earthworms, and there are leeches. Uh, why you would want to hold leeches is beyond me. I uh, That's not a thing that I'm ever going to want to ever do, but uh, in the game, sure, why not? We'll we'll eat bananas whole, so I guess I guess that's a thing that we're just okay with now. So holding <laughs> eating a banana while holding a, a leech <laughs> that's my Saturday night. Uh, so <laughs> the there's also gonna be so there's regular fish, and then there's trophy versions of the fish, which 
just based on the, the the video that they were showing during the update, the trophy fish are ridiculously huge. Like it's it's outrageous that these. I mean, it, I guess it makes sense. They're trophy fish, so they're going to be worth more. So it's kind of like having a um, a shiny Pokemon. I guess would be a good way to kind of say that. You know, you have your regular Pokemon, and you have you know you have your shiny Pokemon, which are like the the special breed of the that Pokemon really really rare so the trophy fish uh you'll you'll be able to cook those just like you will the regular fish and actually turn them in for even more than just a, a standard version of that and i'm imagining that we'll probably get commendations to kind of tie into all of these that, that they'll all have very specific ones so you'll have to catch like a certain number of this one a certain number of that one you'll have to find an elusive one of that they showed some swordfish they showed some uh they're just kind of regular bass or, or trout kind of things um tunas and whatnot not it's hard like the basic shape of a fish um I'm hoping that we get some really kind of elaborate versions out there. You know, when they talk about fishing at night, to me it thinks of like um, angler fish. Like I, I like I would hope that they would put something like an angler fish in there. Obviously, it'll probably be called something different, but uh, if they have that, that would be kind of cool to be able to fish up some of those at night. Um, and and I don't think this will ever be a thing, but if there was a way that you could catch like a shark. Like, that would be awesome. I would love to be able to put a chicken meat on. <laughs> I don't know why it has to be a chicken. It's put chicken meat as bait onto a line and you'd be able to fish and it catch like an actual shark. Like, that would be awesome. I don't know how. Uh, maybe you have to stab it. Maybe you have to like kill it, shoot it before, you know, you get it. But um well i guess you just do that anyway can't you ah well i thought it'd be cool if you could fish up a shark no well so some of the stuff that was actually asked during the weekly stream revolves around what you could expect when actually fishing and they asked would you be able to like reel up uh like sunken chests and it's interesting to me to think about like with with the with the way it looks on the video it looks like everything's fairly surface level it doesn't look really like you're having like a, a a deep line kind of fishing everything's got a you got a bobber and it just kind of holds the bait and then the fish come up to the surface to actually take the bait uh but they did joke um actually they didn't joke it it wasn't a joke at all but it's uh, funny that it happens that you'll be able to fish up the old boot uh, like a physical boot and that you could actually turn that boot in for gold <laughs> although I can't imagine that it'll be worth a whole lot uh, or what Merrick would do with a boot but there you have it so it's it, I, I'm assuming that this isn't the only thing that you'll be able to fish up I'm assuming that there's going to be some other silly stuff out in the world that you can actually dig up uh, or not dig up but fish up when you're out there uh, just depends maybe on where you are at the time or the circumstances I can imagine I still think it would be kind of cool to be able to dig up treasure you know or not dig up treasure i keep saying dig up treasure i think it'd be funny if you could actually like fish up like messages in a bottle um you know different types of of trinkets things that have been lost you know like a like a, a flagon or something i think that would be great um it would be even weirder if you could actually uh fish up cosmetics like if you if you had say a uh like a jacket that you wanted and you were out fishing and you wheeled in you know you wheeled in your 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 uh, line and you pull up what you think is this fish that's been fighting you and really it's just the the current that's been dragging around this jacket for a while and you you pull it up and you're like oh cool and then as soon as you pull it up and, and collect it the the jacket is then added to your inventory and the jacket was something that was just on another pirate that was killed and it left an item behind, like a cosmetic. So you know, you could get a, you could get a, a, a peg leg. You know, if you hooked into a peg leg, like a piece of driftwood, uh, you could collect that cosmetic. Um, I don't know. Is that is that something you guys would want? Would you want to have something like that, or do you think that that's kind of it, it's it's kind of pushing it too far you just want to catch fish you just want to be able to work on the reputation and you'd be kind of annoyed that you would have caught something that you 
possibly already have the cosmetic for and now people are getting cosmetics for free just by fishing like is uh, that's always a concern i have too you know like the balance like the people that have stuff already that don't need it or the people that spent gold on it and other people get it for free that always kind of worries me like you know where do you where do you go on that line on uh what what happens you know if, if if you're upsetting too many people because of something that changes in the game moving on i did want to mention that there are going to be new types of fruit and that the fruit is actually going to be uh what looks like of course a lot of this comes down to staring at screens for way too long and trying to compare what i see to what it would be in real life so here's what i think these fruit are going to be in the game uh so it looks like obviously pineapples easy to recognize coconuts easy to recognize bananas of course we already have and the other two look like what i would assume are mangoes and pomegranates because i've eaten plenty of those and recognize them very well but I, i'm just i'm thinking those are going to be those and the the reason i mention the fruit is because uh all of the fruit apparently and and i guess this is this is the case too with with um, with the actual fishing and meat as well too that everything has different values that it restores as far as health goes and it seems to me that some of the bigger fruit would probably restore more health uh once you've eaten it compared to like just a regular banana so it's going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot of sea of science as the update comes out and we have final like very or final versions on all the fruit and stuff and we can start doing some science on whether or not like how much how much one thing uh increases uh you your HP by how much amount, you know, you like it's it's going to be interesting to find out like just how much it works. The only way I could see this working out well is if you had different types of fruit and you did something that was easily cal- uh, calculated like if you and you could do this solo too if you want you don't necessarily need to have someone attack you to uh, find out like how much health it goes you can you can do something simple like go up to a crow's nest at a uh, at a ship and uh, walk off the the mast and land on the deck in the same area take a certain amount of damage and then eat a piece of fruit and see how much that fruit actually restores you so that way you can start getting an idea like okay the 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 mango is really sweet and you know very fresh fruit so i imagine that probably restores a lot of health uh versus eating a whole banana which is disgusting i can tell you firsthand and uh you know compared to like eating a pineapple which is not going to feel very good but i i'm imagining because it's a big fruit it'll probably give you a lot more hp so based on that and the cooked food too the the cooked food is an interesting thing too and i i want to actually let, let's let me take a quick break here and kind of drop down i want to talk about the hp stuff uh because i think i think it warrants some some explanation <laughs> All right, next up on today's docket, let's talk about cooking. And the reason for it comes down to how this update is going to dramatically change how you deal with other elements in the world. Everything in this game, except for chickens and pigs, is, and probably NPC, actually, I can't really speak for the NPCs. I imagine they might want to kill you if, if given the opportunity. But the 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 most most things in this world are trying are, are out to kill you and send you to the ferry and i i can imagine that a lot of what we do revolves around balancing what we how we fight and our hp bar a lot of people don't pay enough attention to it and they let it get too low and then they get sniped and it looks like and this is kind of crazy that they have basically given us a reserve pool of HP to actually tap into when we're not in combat. Now, this is this is a crazy idea to me because I, for example, uh, just as a weird example, Beardageddon, who is a, uh, an, a, a a great streamer, he does a lot of solo work um, on on out in Sea of Thieves, and he has had emotes just for his chat that are like one HP banana. 
And every time he's just a sliver of health away from full, he eats a banana just just to fill off that one HP. And this has always been like a weird a weird pet peeve of mine in the game. It's it's not a big pet peeve, but it's one of those weird things where every time I'm like every time I watch this I'm like this is strange. Why why is it that you eat a banana and you can get right below full HP? Uh, with in, in the game like why doesn't it just fill you all the way up why doesn't it just push you over whatever that floating point number is to to, to tell you like hey you've got full HP this it's so strange to me that this is a um, an, an issue and the the reason why we're talking about it deals with the fact that now you have a reserve uh, life pool um, it is kind of like a life pool you you have a new circle around the skull for your your hp bar and when you eat something that is properly cooked you'll now get a little gauge that fills up and this reminds me a lot of the the stamina bar in zelda when i looked at it i I instantly thought i was like oh cool that pirate's got some stamina to burn and the more i think about it the more it's not like the stamina bar in zelda the more visually it is but it's more like having extra hearts now if you've ever played breath of the wild and if you haven't you oh my gosh you are missing out on an experience that game sucked so much of my life out when it first came out it was absolutely amazing i'm playing through it again just because i love it and uh it's it's whenever you had like extra stamina food or extra health food what it would do is you would it would fill you all the way up to your normal health and then it would actually add additional heart pieces Uh, onto your life bar and those counted as life so whenever you got hit it would chew through those as if it were like armor so think halo when you have uh, uh, shields if your shields deplete then you you just have your hp bar but if you go out of combat for a while it'll begin to regenerate very similar kind of mechanics same thing with destiny too and this is something that sea of thieves could really benefit from because there's a lot of pirates out there that who they have the time to cook food properly, they eat, they fill up this gauge, and then they go out hunting. And if you're out hunting and you get hit by a, um, it, it, if you get hit by skeletons or sniped or something, and you hide, you can still eat to fill up your your gauge. But if you're just running around doing stuff, and you don't necessarily, or say like, say for example, if you're like me, you tend to jump from high places just to get somewhere quicker. And when you fall, you take damage, but you don't care because you're not in some sort of imminent threat. Now you can actually have a gauge bar that kind of refills you up in case in an emergency you you come across a pirate that's around a corner and you don't realize it and they shoot you. At least you had some time while you were running around doing stuff to have that HP gauge just kind of refill. And it'll just top you off. And it's I don't know how much it'll top you off. I don't know if it's like a one-to-one, like if you completely fill up the little life pool bar, if that will actually give you the, like a full health bar in return. Um, it's it's hard. We'll have to find out. Obviously, we're going to have to wait and find out what it is. And they can always tweak this kind of stuff, which is nice too. But it's it's so cool. It's such a It's such a cool idea to put into the game so that you're not constantly having to sacrifice uh, like like in Sea of Thieves, you never have any sacrifice like a full banana for just a sliver of health because one full banana is enough to 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 uh, you know have a good bit of health taken care of. But when you're in the heat of battle, you don't want to go into a fight at less than 100% just in case you have multiple snipes, uh, which you know two pistol shots is enough to kill you. So if you go in and they shoot you with a pistol, you have less than eight, a full HP. A couple sword slashes later, you're dead. So you kind of want to be in topped off all the time. And if you're able to get away and you have that, then you can continue swimming. Your health bar will be your health bar will begin to refill. You won't necessarily have to slow down to uh, be able to to get, uh, you know, you, to eat. Um, also, this is really nice. Say if you have like a full a full uh, life pool bar. Uh, you know, a nice reserve tank going and you're out swimming with an item trying to get to your ship and a shark bites you and you know, it's two shark bites and you're dead. Um, And I don't, you know, now that I think about it, I don't know how we managed to get a flintlock pistol to have the same power as a shark bite. That's, I didn't think about that just now, but a shark bite is literally as powerful as a flintlock pistol shot. 
sleep sleep on that guys uh but now that you're swimming if you have this pool that you can pull from it'll automatically start to refill you so you can actually take two shark bites and not die if you have one of these uh regens because it'll it'll just probably it'll probably just start filling up while the shark is kind of swimming around waiting to come in for its second bite and you'll probably be able to survive that uh at which point you could probably stop eat something cooked again refill that life bar get yourself back over 50 percent, and then continue swimming that's i'm looking forward to this guys i'm i'm so ready for this this reserve pool of health because uh I think this is going to be amazing. Now, this is from what it sounds like. It doesn't sound like you have to go through the reserve pool of health while you're killing a pirate. It sounds like you can still one shot a pirate with a blunderbuss and they'll still have that reserve bar, but it wouldn't have kicked in because they didn't they weren't out of combat for uh, I think Shelly said it was like. 10 seconds that you had to be out of combat for before it started to regen so they they they've thought about this and man that's awesome uh but the way you get this is by eating properly cooked food and if you eat poorly cooked food if you burn it then you're gonna get sick if you eat raw food then you're gonna get sick so you're you're gonna need to take some time to actually learn about how to actually cook food and maybe take that into real life I don't know. I can't cook, so I, I'm probably going to be a better chef in the game than I am in real life. Next up on today's docket, I did want to talk about the second thing that I wasn't very excited for. And a lot of this comes down to what I what I originally thought was going to be the use case for these. And what I'm talking about is the harpoons. The, the harpoons, so originally... I wasn't sure about what you were going to be able to do with these. I could really only see them being used to kind of attach to docks or islands or other ships. And the the coolest thing that I had really thought about was, okay, hooking yourself up to a Meg and getting dragged around. And the more I thought about it, the more they talked about just what you could do with this harpoon, this is starting to really kind of creep up on my list of like cool things I'm looking forward to. Now that it's already, I am, it's tall tales arena and then hunters call and then uh, fishing and then like harpoons down here at the bottom. Uh, har harpoons are starting to get up there for me. And uh, of course this all kind of comes down to execution and how well it's done. But being able to watch them talk about pulling, uh, you know, being to do the sharp turns is really cool. Kind of reminds me of uh, Batman, the original Batman with Michael Keaton, where he shoots out that anchor point, hits a, a, a iron railing or whatever it was. It was like a support structure for a, a train, I think, and kind of whip around this corner while the Joker uh, uh, goons were chasing after them in the Joker mobiles. Like that, that's kind of what it reminds me of Sea of Thieves. So I'm looking forward to that. And, the, the, but with the harpoons, the fact that you're going to be able to shoot this at treasure, at players, at powder kegs, and uh, interact with them this way, it seems like these are going to be really, really useful. And I think the biggest thing that I noticed was that this is going to come in handy when you are, uh, when you, when you're actually sailing around. And obviously they said that they put a little auto aim on this to kind of assist with it. So I don't know how that affects uh, like mouse and keyboard if we get the auto aim as well. But being able to nail as you're sailing by a, a barrel, like one of the, so the barrels that are out in the water, if you don't know, those are called barrels of plenty. Uh, I know that for a fact. So uh, a, a lot of them, you, a lot of people call it flotsam because that's more of like the, the nautical term for it. Um, but, or floatsam, I think it's floatsam, flotsam or floatsam. It depends on where you're from, I guess. But essentially what it was was stuff that was tossed overboard or fell overboard from a ship or a wreckage that is now floating on the surface. Uh, they have It's why they call things like flotsam and jetsam. Those are nautical terms for different types of wreckages, stuff that's actually uh, like jetsam is like when they jettison 
something from a ship, they purposefully toss it off the side uh, to, to either lighten the ship load or to get rid of it or to, um, to, to act as a distraction. Uh, if you've ever dumped treasure off of a ship to try and deter a, uh, a pursuing crew who's after something that you took from them, that would be called jetsam. Um, if you're finding barrels of plenty out in the middle of the sea and you're, you're looking to resupply with those, those would be called flotsams. Uh, there's your little nautical lesson for today. Um, so the the barrels of plenty, like we've, we we're used to these. We're used to using these as resupplies, but we never really ever stop to them unless we really need to get a whole lot of supplies. Most of the time, one to two pirates will typically jump off and go loot the barrels and then grab a mermaid back. That's kind of been our, our MO for restocking on the go. And it works great. It's a great method of getting a full supply of stuff, uh, but you're not always prepared. And you may not always have time or be as fast to be able to drop off your supplies before you see those going. And the harpoons, and again, this comes down to execution, but my, my idea of what happens is you're shooting these as you're sailing, you hit one, it retracts it back to the ship, and then you can actually loot the barrel while it's attached to the harpoon. So that you're no longer having to actually stop or jump off the ship. If something happens, you know, how many times have you been out sailing and you're in a galleon, three people jump off to go collect some supplies from the from the barrels of plenty and you get hit with a kraken. And it's far enough to wade to where the, the mermaid hasn't spawned, but it's so far that it's still going to take a while for them to swim back. And it's just, ex, it's excruciating because usually once a kraken hits, the first thing it does is it slaps you. And then you're like, all right, well, <laughs> this is going to be a pain in the butt. So having the ability, and 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 if this works out the way I, I, I think it's going to work out, you can shoot a barrel. It'll retract the barrel back to the ship while you're sailing, loot the barrel, and then drop the barrel and that way, if it's got a lot of stuff, awesome. You don't miss out on on them sinking because that was a that was a big issue that we've been dealing with for a long time. Is as soon as you get out to a bunch of barrels of plenty, they start sinking. How frustrating is that? And to be able to hook one in and loot it just sounds awesome to me. Moving on to what you can do when you're actually at an island. Say you're on an island, you're doing gold hoarders. You got you got your Athena going and there's four chests on an island and you find a bunch of extra stuff. You're parked next to the beach and there's one guy on lookout because there's a couple of ships out in the on the horizon. You're now sitting there with nothing to do. What can you do? Well, you can fish, you can cook, or you can start using the harpoon and pulling in treasure that people drop off on the beach for you and start loading that onto the ship without ever actually having to leave the ship. So you can always stay alert. You can always be there. You're never caught unaware. And you still get to help out. Meanwhile, the rest of your crew is out on the island. They're killing skeletons. They're digging up treasure. And they're bringing it back and dropping it off onto the actual island. Now, the the caveat caveat to this is that we don't know for sure if gunpowder barrels like they said in the stream they weren't sure but if you shoot a gunpowder barrel if it'll explode or not so we don't quite know if you can secure a, a gunpowder barrel with a harpoon i imagine you wouldn't i feel like that's one of those things that if you if you hit it with a sword it explodes if you hit it with a harpoon it's kind of the same thing so i can imagine that probably doesn't work so maybe not have the gunpowder barrels like on the beach next to your treasure because that'll probably just explode and then push the boat unless you're anchored but why would you be anchored what's the point of an anchor anymore uh i'm kidding i'm kidding but to be able to to use this harpoon it's it sounds amazing to be able to have like an interactive way to do stuff so it's not just like jump off the ship grab the treasure swim back climb up the ladder drop it off it's it's more like all right now this is a game now I'm making a game within a game. Now how do I get the little trinket off of the beach while the other guys are doing their stuff? And that's great because that always gives you a level of interactivity that isn't that doesn't feel like a, a, a boring task. You know, it's something that requires a lot more skill and helps you learn 
how to do something so that it can be applicable in the future when you're dealing with like engagements, when you're actually dealing with, say, like there is a guy who is swimming with a powder keg towards your ship. If you get on the harpoon and you shoot him and it explodes 10 points, right? That's how that works. So I was really happy about this. Uh, they, they did confirm in the weekly update that this is a core function of the ship and as such it doesn't have cosmetics but I would not be surprised if they didn't start adding cosmetics for the harpoons and my my reasoning behind this is because right now we have the spots where the harpoons go uh, they, they put the little speed holes in there for a long time and this is something that I think uh, it's it's something that they can add or subtract obviously depending on the update and as such i think it's a separate part that they can then put apply different cosmetics to it so i i wouldn't be surprised if we started getting cosmetics for the harpoons soon and i mean this is something that they had prototyped in the in the unity engine which again the fact that everything they put in the game right now is still something that they have put into the Unity engine outside of the HP bar. That was the one thing they said that hadn't been in the Unity engine. It is insane just how much these guys put into working on making sure that they had features and functionality all the way back when the game first started development. And that's that's amazing. You can tell that this has been something that they've been wanting to do for a long time and it's we you know we're starting to get iterations of that i'm so excited to, to be able to try this stuff out also i can't believe that the the harpoon video has a uh, a video of the shrouded ghost them harpooning a shrouded ghost in the like really really oh one thing i did forget to mention is uh there one of the questions that they had in the stream was can you counter the harpoon and they did say yes you can counter a harpoon there's a couple ways to do it you if you're on this off you're on the enemy ship you can slash your sword at the harpoon and it'll break the line if you shoot a cannon at the harpoon it'll break the line or if you maneuver in a certain way to break the line of sight of the harpoon you can then you can snap it off as well too but i imagine that that would be that'd be a little bit harder to get away from because they could probably just reshoot the actual harpoon out so nice that they put those kind of things in place to be able to do that and the way they said the physics works is basically if you have a heavy object and a light object when you harpoon the two if the lighter object is trying to reel in the heavier object, the heavier ob object will still slowly move towards the lighter object, but the lighter object will probably move in faster towards the actual heavier object. So galleons, heaviest thing in the game, that's going to be the thing that you move towards. I imagine like Megs and Krakens obviously uh, are going to be the, the heaviest of heavy and will be able to take, you know, drag just about anything. But it's uh, it's it's kind of cool to find out, you know, that that physics and weight are actually accurate in, in the game now that the that the rowboat doesn't weigh as much as a galleon and that a sloop is going to get dragged around by a uh, brigantine. So very cool. I, I'm looking forward to this now. I, I wasn't before. I'm, I'm, I'm I want to play around with this now. Ah, it'd be time for a captain's log now. This is not just any story, I tell ya. This be a tale of a booty slam and a fort. Now, it starts out like any other day. You get in a sloop, you stock up, and you head out for a bit of adventure. But this, this was not just any adventure, for you see, myself and my good mate booty slam, we'd be out in the shores of plenty enjoying ourselves and gathering up a bit of treasure and what have you. But we decided on this day of all days that our first sail and back together that we decided to go to the old skeleton fort up at Keel Hall. Of course, it felt like fate. And as we sailed over, we pulled in the Keel Hall fort with not but a hole in our ship from the cannons that flew overhead. It was quite the sight, and as we made dock, we decided to take on as much as we could. We were killing skeletons left and right, leaving their bones to lie bleaching in the sun. 
and power kegs exploding behind us, taking out waves of the undead as it started to rock our ship. We started taking on a bit of cannon fire from the towers nearby, and we decided to get a little more reacquainted with the island, bringing her up close, right up to the beach, and drop an anchor to ensure that no more further interruptions for what was having a good time smacking skeletons with swords and blunderbussing faces as we could. This was all well and good for a good time until not too long after, maybe about halfway through this adventure, a galleon started to sail in towards us from the south. I saw it and I called out to Bodhi, Aye, we've got sails on the horizon, lad. We'd better stay close to the ship. After a few glances outward, he caught eye of the invaders and agreed we better be staying close to the ship. Now, we took on these invaders knowing that we were outmanned and outgunned. But whether or not they could outsail us was a different story. So we set sail and went around in circles a keel hall, hoping that the undead and their unrelenting fire could help us in our task of taking out this galleon that dare step foot on me island and my treasure. We started to sail out and started to use the rocks and our maneuverability to outpace this ship to gain a bit of space as I tried to let Bodhi back onto me island so that he could finish off the waves and kill the captain that holds the key to the treasure below in the vault. This, this is where we had bit of a fail in. See, I, in my lust for gold and not paying as much attention as I should, I let one of them get aboard, and they dropped me anchor and killed me. And as I came back from the ferry, I started to notice that holes were appearing on the uh, ship and water were be filling up me hole. Bodhi, Bodhi was on the island. He was doing a fine job. He was slaying the undead left and right, and he killed that captain, and he took that key, and he tried to hide it. He stowed it away in a place where we could know, and our ship sank. The skeleton fort, the cloud dissipated, and all was silent for a time. I came back to me ship just as the bilges were coming in, and it was crushing our ship, and we couldn't sink. And as it started to fall into the water, I caught out in the distance the galleon. The galleon that had bested us. Oh, I was furious. I couldn't handle it. I was angry. And I started to notice everything going dark. But it wasn't me life that was snuffed out that moment. No, it was the water. The water had started to turn as black as night. And slowly, these long tentacles rose up with cries and wails, anger and hate stemming from the water as if it were me own arms reaching out and grabbing the galleon to crush it in my hands. That kraken, the kraken came, and it started to smash that galleon to bits while the sailors were hunting for the key and making sure that our ship sank. There was but one soul on that ship, and that ship went down fast. We came back from the island, and we got a new ship down at Mermaid's Hideaway. We were so far. I was so distraught. I hadn't lost a ship like that in a long time, and it not be something I look forward to happening again. But Bodhi, Bodhi, with his pure heart, he pushed he told me that we weren't going to let this happen. We were going to go back there and finish the job. And we sailed north up to Keelhall Fort. As we kept going, my frustration and anger got the better of me, and all I wanted was to kill these pirates and take my treasure. What was rightfully mine? What was at my island? I wasn't going to let them win that day. We got out to Keelhall Fort, and sure enough, the Kraken had done her duty. She had crippled the ship and brought it down into the depths, as I wished it would. We sailed over, and I shot Bodhi onto the island to check for the key, to check for the vault. But it had been emptied. They had found the key, those bastards. 
And they had loaded up everything they could on a rowboat and started to row out towards Sanctuary Outpost. We weren't going to let that happen, though. No. There were two rowboats out there, ours and theirs. And we tried to figure out which one. Just which one could it be? Could it be ours? Could it be theirs? Could it be split amongst the two and we just have to pick the better of two? Ah. And then, in the distance, we saw it. Three sails, I tell you. Three sails coming towards us at a breakneck speed. Ah, they were back. They were coming. They were trying to pick up their crewmates who had put all the treasure on one rowboat. And we started to sail, both ships heading towards each other. We crossed paths and volleyed shots at each other. Meanwhile, the rowboat in the middle betwixt us trying to get towards the galleon but the galleon was at full sail it could just stop unless they anchored and that would put them dead at the water i tell you dead in the water and then as i sit there and i look out they come around at such a wide angle i thought we have time we have time and i start to start firing cannonballs at the rowboat hoping hoping i can sink them hoping that i can reclaim some of my treasure I miss shot after shot. I can't get it. I can't. I can't. I'm too angry. I'm shaking. I'm trying to get this treasure. I try firing at them and it doesn't work. Finally, I tell Bodhi, Bodhi, take the ship, lad. Take the ship and keep sailing. I've got a plan. I load myself into the cannon and Bodhi lights the fuse and fires me out towards the rowboat. I take a shot with my eye of reach. I aim down the glass. I see it. It's this green green like envy that I feel in my soul one shot crosses across them that misses so furious I have to calm down I have to calm down I have to calm down I look again I aim up the shot I pull the trigger as I'm treading water boom giant explosion Something only that could be done by a mega keg takes out the rowboat and the two souls aboard and everything starts sinking down into the water. (laughs) Nothing better, nothing more deserving than killing those bastards that took my treasure. It's mine now and I sail over there with Bodhi. We grab what we can. There's pirates shooting themselves from the galleon as it's trying to come around to stop us from gathering what treasure we can. We grab the best bits of it, leaving the scrappings for the galleon out in the distance. We turn tail and we start heading right into the wind. Full sails forward. Sails are stupid, they say, but I say it won us that day. That's right. We sailed out. We kept in that wind and they tried to follow. And for as long as they kept going, they kept pulling away more and more distance till eventually Bodhi jumped off the back to sail out to see if he could try and intercept them but they were gone now I don't know what happened to that ship could have been claimed by a beast of the sea for all I know or they could have just vanished the fog could have rolled in and swallowed them up but what I do know is that we got the best of that loot And while we may just be two pirates against a galleon and the forces that be, we got that treasure. We turned it in. And it was a victory. A victory I savor to this very day. (laughs) Ah, thank you, Bodhi Sam. Sometimes, sometimes a sailor needs a good crewmate to keep his head in the game. To take what you've rightfully worked for, and to never give up, never surrender. All right, pirates, that's going to do it for this episode of Keel Hauled Podcast. I hope you liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this brought a little bit of joy to your day. If it did, feel free to let me know. There are so many ways that you can let me know if you like this or not. You can let me know if you didn't like it, actually. I always take feedback and try to... Make sure that you guys are happy with everything that I do. 
as you may have noticed, I actually have some new album artwork. Now, this is actually something I'm really happy about. So, Omid Hani, uh, who did the Crow's Nest artwork, uh, I commissioned him to actually make some logo art for me. And the reason for it was a lot of it had to do with the fact that the artwork that we had for Keelhauled was stuff that I got from Rare when they put out a, uh, a decal pack for you to be able to print out logos to carve pumpkins for way back in the day. They put out templates so that you could do Sea of Thieves pumpkins. And I took those and I used them for artwork because they were good graphics. It's not my artwork, and because of that, I, I wanted to have something that felt more unique to Keelhauled. So if you take a look at the artwork, I love it because it's got uh, the two the two cross blades, which I always wanted, the skull. It has uh, a mast because, of course, tie yourselves to the mast and hold fast. And it has audio waves, which are kind of waves of the sea for the podcast because this is my audio this is my my contribution to the sea of thieves community i i love it he's, he's done great work it's been a, a real pleasure working with him and i'm hoping that what this means is that i can start working on getting out merchandise for the show because a lot of the the costs that come from twitch and stuff or a lot of the costs that come from the uh, the show are gained from twitch streaming usually when i'm streaming i any of the, the the money that i actually make off of that goes into a pool that i pull from so that i can take care of any of the the bills as far as like the actual hosting or any of the artwork that i build the programs that i use for that or the programs that i use for this i actually use uh, adobe uh, audition to build out the show and that i i usually have to to pay like the the adobe creative cloud thing so because of that there are some fees that come with making this and thankfully twitch has has made enough that it usually takes care of that but with the merchandise, I I personally, I want to be able to rep the show because I love my show. I'm very proud of it. It's something that I, I want to be able to have out there so that if people see it, they're like, dude, that's cool. Just like I had with the Sea of Thieves shirt and I can let them know, you know, what's about it. Plus, if you guys wanted to rep the show, it would be an honor. It'd be a dream, actually, to have something that people want to wear uh, clothing for, for a pod, something that I, that's just, it. that blows my mind right there. But uh I'm looking into doing that. Um, I'm going to be talking with some friends uh, how they do it, as well as taking inquiries uh, for other people. I've already gotten a couple. And because of that, I will probably let you guys know a little bit in advance when I have that kind of worked out and where you can go, what you can do to get them. And I want to try to make it available for something that's international because I know that I've got a lot of folks in Australia and England and different parts of the EU as well as uh, Asia that, that want to be able to, and Canada, sorry, I, I won't forget about you, Canada. You're still part of the U.S. as, as far as I'm concerned. I want to make sure that I, I let you guys know when that's coming out. So I'll have more details going forward uh, about how you can get merch uh, once I know how to get that up and running, who to go through, where people can get it, you know, regardless of where you are. And I'll try to keep keep it so that the cost is down and stuff. So regardless, thank you. I love you. Going back to uh, how to get a hold of me if you guys want to. It's easy. I'm on Twitter at C-A-P-T underscore L-O-G-U-N. If you want to email me like Todd did, Todd sent me an email about a, uh, a fishing tournament that he wants to get going, and I've talked with some creators about it, and I need to get back to him. I keep forgetting to. Um, we're getting fishing, so of course, fishing, it has to be a thing. You can always write me an email too, c-a-p-t-l-o-g-u-n at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me in-game, you can always message me at uh, c-a-p-t-a-i-n-l-o-g-u-n, Captain Logan, all one word. Uh, that's my Xbox gamer tag. I'm thinking about, and if you guys have listened this long, thank you, because this is this is a show that goes long, and it's just one person talking. So I appreciate you listening to this to me this long. Are you guys interested to get more as far as general gaming? Because I've been having an itch lately that I need scratched, and I'm thinking about doing more of like a general podcast as well too. Something that covers like some of the bigger news. It just depends on how much uh, effort and time it's going to take 
or maybe if I can help get someone to help offload that that workload by picking up a co-host. Um, I've got plans for a couple other things, but I'm, I'm thinking about maybe doing like a more general podcast. What do you guys think? Is that something you'd be interested in or have you got you got enough dudes telling you about the news in podcast world? Let me know. Um, other than that, I think that's about it. As always, any any reviews or likes on Apple Podcasts helps bring awareness to the community to let them know. You'd be surprised how many people don't know that there are podcasts just for CFEs out there. And as the longest running one besides rares, I am whole, wholly committed to making sure that people have up-to-date content and news as well as good stories from you and myself in the future for CFEs. We're getting close to the to the anniversary update. It just popped in my head. This is the last full week. Oh, man. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are, too. Thank you, Pirates. I love you. I look forward to sailing with you on the Sea of Thieves.